We are currently witnessing the death of the biggest streaming platform ever, Twitch. Over the span of 24 months, Twitch's average monthly viewership has dropped by roughly 30% and it seems like it won't stop anytime soon. You see, Twitch has been implementing numerous greedy policies and banning their top streamers for dumb reasons, repeatedly showing us how out of touch they are with their community. And with new competitions such as Kick and YouTube constantly enticing streamers with multi-million dollar contracts to leave Twitch, it seems like their future position in the streaming industry is at stake. However, before we explore how their disregard for the community has led to their decline, we need to understand why exactly creators are leaving. And part of this is Twitch's terrible moderation. Twitch is arguably the most censoring platform, banning words such as simp, incel, and virgin, a move that many consider an overreach. Twitch is also known to be very comfortable handing out bans to their top streamers, often for reasons seemingly minor. Their number one streamer, XQC, was handed a 7-day ban for stream sniping. Delor was banned for smashing a keyboard over his head, and Dr. Disrespect never even received an official reason. Twitch has proved time and time again that they won't hesitate to swing the manhammer, regardless of your influence on the platform. A case in point is Aiden Ross, who dominated Twitch throughout 2021 and 2022. Aiden was potentially bringing in millions of dollars to the site. However, Aiden claimed that Twitch began censoring him from the platform as soon as he began embarking on his transformative journey to improve his lifestyle. Aiden was banned a total of 8 times before moving to another platform alternative. However, it doesn't just stop at Twitch banning creators for dumb reasons. Twitch also appears to play favorite dealing uneven punishments to different creators. Take for instance Jideon, who received a permanent ban for encouraging his audience to spam L plus ratio on Poke Mainstream, while Kamika faced a mere 7 day ban for engaging in sexually explicit activities in front of her viewers. The unequal treatment understandably raised concerns about potential sexism and favoritism within Twitch's moderation system. And since Jideon never got a second chance, unlike Kamika, it's not hard to understand why people have such opinions. In May of 2020, Twitch formed the Safety Advisory Council, who was advised to protect marginalized groups' interests and promote healthy streaming habits. However, when it came to light that one of the counselors was Steph Lower, a self-identified transgender deer with a history of making controversial statements, Twitch faced a wave of criticism. Steph had previously expressed that voice chat was somehow discriminatory against women and other minorities, and also believed the gaming community was infested with white supremacists. I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Sorry, just a fact of how I feel. The controversy then escalated when she was seen acting like a deer on stream, leading some to question her mental stability. In my spare time, I go out to my yard and I prance around and I eat grass. It huh? makes me feel like in tune with my deer self. However, the central issue here was that Steph appeared to wield her power, allegedly threatening to use her influence against those who dared to challenge Twitch's narrative. I have power. They can't take it away from me. There, there are some people that should be afraid of me. Um, and that they are. A former employee of Twitch, Theo Rance, posted a video further explaining how Twitch terribly treats its creators and why he left Twitch. Twitch doesn't care about creators. Twitch cares about looking like they care about creators. Everything Twitch has done for the last four years has been with the goal of feeling like they understand and care. Theo claims that the head staff at Twitch lacks the consideration for their streamers, especially their smaller ones. You see, Twitch has arguably zero discoverability when it comes to finding new streamers. Twitch prioritizes showing the most popular streams, turning a blind eye to content quality. Therefore, if you only average 5 viewers, the likelihood of you landing on Twitch's front page is almost non-existent. This creates a seemingly insurmountable hurdle for new creators, who must focus on marketing themselves outside of Twitch to experience any growth. On the contrary, YouTube takes a much different approach. With its advanced search engine and algorithm, YouTube excels in helping people achieve growth faster. On top of this, the user experience on Twitch has also faced some criticism. Typically, you will encounter three minute ad break for every hour, which is relatively standard across streaming platforms. But ever since Twitch introduced its ads incentive program in 2022, streamers have been encouraged to incorporate longer ad breaks of 8 to 10 minutes per hour. Although this approach may initially benefit the streamer's revenue, it will lead to a negative viewing experience. Lengthy ad breaks disrupt the flow of content. They may also lead to frustration, causing viewers to either leave the platform or watch another streamer, only to be hit with another wave of ads. Twitch's reliance on ad revenue is understandable. However, it raises eyebrows when this pursuit of profit appears to overshadow the financial well-being of its creators. This has prompted big creators like Mr. Beast to aim at the company. Hey Twitch, how about instead of handicapping what creators make, you help them make more? Seems more logical. 
Mr. Beast claims that rather than helping creators earn more money, Twitch constantly tries to limit their earnings. I mean, after all, Twitch still offers the worst revenue split out of all the major streaming platforms, taking an equal 50-50 share from the streamer's total earnings. In response to this critique, Twitch introduced a Partner Plus program as a corrective measure in June 2023, promising a more favorable 70-30 split, where out of 100% of total earnings, 70% goes to the streamer and 30% goes to Twitch. But the benefit of this new scheme is only available to those capable of sustaining at least 350 subscribers for 3 consecutive months. And the problem here is that out of 7 million streamers on Twitch, only a measly 1,000 have met this steep requirement and remain stuck in a less profitable 50-50 bracket. And as if the challenge of making a livable income wasn't hard enough, Twitch announced that once a creator hits the $100,000 earnings mark, the platform reverts the split back to 50-50, further tightening the squeeze on its creators. Comparatively, platforms like YouTube, Kick, and Rumble offer much better terms. YouTube provides a 70-30 split for all creators, Kick raises the stakes with a 95 and 5 division, and Rumble provides a full 100% revenue share to its creators. Twitch's greediness, however, doesn't end with unfavorable revenue splits, as they recently announced new restrictions on branded sponsorships that have been widely slammed as one of the worst changes ever made. The policy impacts sponsored and branded content, limiting logos and brand overlays to 3% of a streamer's screen size. The change also prohibits third-party audio ads and also inserted ads. The problem with this policy change is that a significant portion of a streamer's income stems from brand sponsorships, meaning that Twitch is once again capping their creators' earnings. The most likely motive behind this policy change is that Twitch doesn't get any money from streamers dealing with their own sponsorships. So, Twitch decided they would force their creators into using Twitch's own sponsorships by implementing restrictions on third parties, thereby maximizing company profits. Predictably, this heavy-handed approach backfired. With creators announcing their decisions to leave the platform for good, Twitch immediately backpedaled on this change. Twitch understandably needs the money to sustain its operations, as delivering high definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the globe is expensive. However, it's hard to shake off the feeling that Twitch's primary concern is more than just sustaining its operations, it's merely to fatten their wallet, even if it means taking away from their creators. And with new competition like Kick, Rumble, and YouTube, each offering better alternatives, it's hard to understand why Twitch has yet to step up their game. Because in the past months, Kick has seen a tremendous increase in growth. They've been constantly stealing Twitch's top streamers by enticing them with better revenue splits, a more lenient terms of service, and a better support system for its creators. However, a pivotal moment arrived when XQC, Twitch's number one streamer, decided to switch platforms. XQC's move to Kick wasn't just a regular platform switch, it was historical. On the 16th of June, XQC signed a $100 million deal to stream non exclusively on Kick for two years. This marked the largest streaming contract ever signed. In fact, the deal was the 12th largest sports contract in history. But it doesn't stop at XQC's deal, as Amaranth and Aiden Ross have also signed two year contracts, reportedly worth $30 million each. Rumors are also swirling about Kick courting Mr. Beast as well. These big decisions have led to an approximate 40% increase in Kick's average monthly viewers, and an astonishing 251% increase in active channels. Kick is obviously making ways, but how exactly can Kick compete with Twitch? Kick operates and appears precisely like Twitch. The only exception is that Kick is a much more relaxed streaming platform. Twitch is arguably the worst platform for free speech, but Kick will pretty much let any type of content go. Streamers can gamble and be free to say and do whatever they want without the worry about getting banned on Kick. However, the downside to this leniency is that it might make brands more cautious about partnering due to the potential for more controversial content. YouTube Live may also become a massive problem for Twitch. Despite its less than perfect user experience, inferior video quality compared to Twitch, cluttered UI, and an outdated discovery page, YouTube still holds substantial market share. It sees an estimated 122 million users each day, compared to Twitch's 31 million. On top of this, YouTube offers a 70-30 revenue split to all its creators, unlike Twitch, where only an exclusive group has access to a similar split. For the past decade, the streaming industry has yet to see much diversity. With platforms such as Mixer coming and going, Twitch has always been at the top. However, with new opportunities and better alternatives than Kick, YouTube, and Rumble, Twitch's dominance will slowly fade. And if they actually want to retain its position at the top, they need to revisit its policies and make a concerted effort to better cater to the needs of its creators, or else it may find itself being left behind for good.